this past fall, I was teaching at my church's youth group on the breastplate of righteousness, which I don't know if you've ever tried to teach on that before, but it's very, not just theological, but it's very ethical type of a conversation. And I'm teaching this to teens. So I'm trying to like hit them at their level, you know, and it's a little tricky, but I'm doing my best. When all of a sudden I notice front row dead center right in front of me there's this teenage boy and he's got a bottle a glass bottle of coca-cola you know with the pop tops to it and he's trying to open this bottle of pop with his teeth he is going to town trying to bust this thing open finally one of my friends because i'm just trying to ignore him the entire time one of my friends comes down and sits next to him and whispers to him you need to stop until brandon is done Welcome to my seminary life. I'm your host for today's episode, Brandon Knight. I'm the host for every episode, but I'm on other podcasts with other people. So sometimes I just say that. We are starting a brand new series together called Communication in Ministry. And coming off of the ministry administration class in the spring and looking forward to in the fall, I believe the first class up is a class on leadership. I read this title and thought to myself, what is this, a whole class on writing emails? What is communication and ministry supposed to be about? Thankfully, getting into the material now during this first week, reading the syllabus, watching the lectures, starting to read my textbooks, what it actually is is a class on preaching this class is going to talk about the different areas that you can be teaching the gospel teaching scripture but primarily focused on preaching which is a big sigh of relief from me because for those of you who know and if you don't know this is your first indication this is a I, I'm a pulpit supply preacher. I, I do pulpit supply here in Northwest Indiana, providing um, providing help to churches who either have n- no pastor or they're searching for a pastor or the pastor is going on vacation or sabbatical or they have to quarantine because that's an option now. I go in to assist the church that Sunday morning or repeated Sunday mornings. There's some churches I've preached at twice, one time, some that I've been preaching at for eight years. It just depends on the situation. So being in a class on preaching then, even though I have had a lot of experience, I'm really excited for this because I'm passionate, if you can't tell, about communication. I have a minor in communication. I have a podcast. I love studying how we communicate with other people. What was interesting, I think I talked about this a little bit during the college stories series this past uh, this past few weeks, past month. I talked about how I really enjoyed my classes in communication because they were very theoretical. They were very, you know, philosophical. Rhetoric is a, you know, falls in the philosophy realm. And so I enjoyed these more theoretical types of classes rather than my hard truth theology courses. It was a good balance towards one another. And much to my pleasant surprise, that's what this class is like. I've taken preaching classes before and they were great. They were fine, but they were very nuts and bolts. This is how you study. These are the books that you need to have do proper exegesis of a passage. This is how you write a manuscript. This is how you write an outline. Okay, now preach and we're going to critique your style. I was told to stop taking, I was told to take my hands out of my pockets. Apparently it was very bothersome that I would sometimes keep one of my hands in my pockets because it just feels very natural to me to do that. No, I'm not bitter about it. So I've been in these classes before that were very nuts and bolts type of courses, which is fine. This one, though, at least within this first week, is scratching that communications department itch that I have of being a little bit more theoretical, being a little bit more on the philosophical end of preaching, which is very exciting. 
we've got two books for this class. First one and the one that I'm reading first off is Biblical Preaching by Hudson Roberts Robinson. Excuse me, Hudson Robinson. He is, like I said, dealing a lot with the philosophical side of preaching. There was an entire chapter. There was an entire chapter on ideas. How do we formulate ideas? How do people in the audience formulate ideas? All very, it was very interesting. I, I can tell this is going to be one of those books I'm going to need to read, reread several times over to really grasp everything that he's saying. The other book that we have is Creative Biblical Teaching by two people whose name escapes me at the moment. Let's see if I can pull it up real quick. It's from Moody Publishers. I'm trying to pull it up quickly. Don't have to read this one yet, but the title is interesting to me because this sounds like... Lauren. Okay, so it's written by Lawrence O. Richards and Gary J. Breadfelt. Breadfelt. Interesting. I haven't started reading this one yet. I'm just kind of flipping through it right now. Let's see if I can get to the table of contents. The title, at least, gives me the idea that this is going to be a, a book on, since it's talking about creative Bible teaching, I'm thinking that this is going to help us as ministers learn how to creatively teach the Bible without it becoming all about the show. You know, those preachers who are very, that kind of turn into the lights and the sound and the smoke and the jumping up and down and clapping Stephen Furtick style of preaching, where it's a little bit more about the show and the presence or presentation rather. I'm thinking this book might be a helpful tool on how to do something like that without it being distracting. Uh, so we got studying the Bible. So a section on how to study Focusing the message, structuring the lesson, teaching the class. Okay, so this is actually, this looks a little bit more like a nuts and bolts type of book of this is step one, step two, step three, but it looks like it's more geared towards teaching. So the divide between preaching from the pulpit on a Sunday morning and teaching like small groups or a Sunday school class, or you get the idea. So we'll see. Like I said, don't have to read this book right now. Now I'm trying to get back to the right page here on my book. Um, boop, 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 boop. Overall, I am excited for this class. It helps that my favorite prof from college is the professor for this class doc rock so that's always helpful he's a good guy he is i was talking to jonathan who was on the show back a few months ago that doc rock is more of a pastor than he is a professor and he does teach a lot of the more uh, pastoral courses he's got this one i believe he teaches local church ministry in the 21st century so he's a little bit more of a shepherding heart than a professor approach which definitely shows in his how he engages with students because he was so so relatable if you've ever heard me use the joke which you have if you've been listening to the show for a while does anybody have any comments questions concerns limericks poems that's him that's where i got that joke that's how he would close almost every class so the big question for this week though of us getting started was why does preaching matter does preaching matter in the 21st century, because apparently this was news to me, at least according to Doc Rock and also Robinson in his book, they both bring up that apparently there are people in modern day American church who think that preaching is outdated, that preaching is something that the church doesn't need anymore, which I find fascinating because I have never heard it like that before. If anything, it seems like how we structure our services and how we treat certain preachers is that preaching is the main event. 
preaching is uh, the the time for the sermon is like the time that we're really here for this morning. The music is the hype to get us to the big crescendo of the pastor preaching a sermon. Now, I guess if you go to a really dry church, maybe that's different. But apparently there is a desire in the church not just to move away from exegetical preaching, which is of course the type of preaching that is being um, emphasize here in this course. We'll get to that here in a second, but that we just need to drop preaching altogether and move into more of a conversation like environment, which, you know, the guy who does the podcasting can kind of see the value in that, you know, my small groups, that small group that meets um, every other week, we try to have more of discussion based rather than just me teaching all of the time. We try to have more of a discussion based approach. I know that, which is helpful. You know, I have found that there, there has been times where as we're going through passages of scripture, after we discuss a passage, I sit down and I write and then preach an entire sermon because there was stuff that came up in our conversation that was really good that I wasn't going to get out of a commentary because I then looked at the commentary and I was like, huh, you people didn't talk about this. But, and obviously going back to the podcasting, there is value in having a conversation over a passage of scripture over a significant topic But there's something different about preaching and there's different styles of preaching. Obviously, like I said, the big one that they're emphasizing here is exegetical preaching, which exegetical preaching is the verse by verse working through a text of scripture, trying to emphasize what the historical and literary context of that passage communicated to the original audience and then how to bring that to the modern day audience. So topical preaching is more of the, hey, we're going to talk about, for some reason, finances came to mind first. We're going to talk about tithing. So we're going to hop around to a bunch of different passages on tithing. That's not exegetical preaching. Exegetical preaching is, okay, open your Bible to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to go through this passage verse by verse by verse and talk about what it meant to the church in Colossae when Paul wrote these things and then how this applies to us today. There is an application aspect to it. I often like to make fun of the pa- the people who preach TED Talks with the Bible verse, meaning that they are pretty much like I'm going to read a verse, but then the rest of it is all social science, um, psych- social psychology type of like how to apply every little thing and do every little step rather than trying to sit under the authoritative word of God as it communicates truth to us. Because as we talked about all those classes ago and spiritual formation, truth transforms us. You know, we can learn how to do good moralistic things and how to love our neighbors, but truth is what transforms us. There's a third style, which I've never heard this style before, but I've done this. I do this one frequently, actually, because of the nature of the pulpit supply ministry, devotional preaching, which is kind of this hybrid of both where you might be in a passage of scripture, like one text, but you're giving more, a little bit more surface level observations on a passage. So it's kind of this hybrid of exegetical and topical where you're not getting too deep into the weeds of the context and whatnot, but still staying within the confines of one particular passage. So again, we're looking at more so the exegetical side of preaching. And this matters, preaching matters because the Bible says so, end of episode. Kidding. The preaching matters because this is the way, this is a way that lives are transformed through the gospel. 
there is an emphasis in this book. I've never heard this before, but this makes a lot of sense that you are communicating a message from God. A pastor communicates a message from God when they preach. And it's not just the words that they are speaking. It's their very lifestyle. Everything about the pastor communicates a message from God when they are preaching, which is why it is so significant for the pastor to live out the message that they are preaching. That when they are studying a text of scripture on grace, that they are then attempting to live a life of graciousness, that they are being gracious at home with their family, that they're being gracious to the people who are working at the church throughout the rest of the week. The pastor is the entire, the entire pastor is the entire message, not just the words that are spoken, which this was the part that started scratching some of that communication studies itch for me, because a lot of times, and I think this is good to some extent, a lot of times people don't are uncomfortable with the importance of the pastor as a communication tool. We get very spiritually minded, maybe overly spiritually minded on this part, in my opinion, where we become, you know, the pastor is, you know, the pastor is just the vessel for truth to be communicated. You know, don't pay attention to the pastor. And I, I see value in that because that is important. We don't want to celebrity celebrity eyes celebrity uh, making up words now um we don't want to turn our pastors into celebrities and oh they're great and wonderful preacher and lose the actual message but the presentation by the pastor still matters that might ruffle some feathers because there's an entire generation of people who will emphasize the other way that the pastor should be as bland and as monotone and as uninteresting as possible because it's the word of God that matters. Yes. And also kind of no, that to the pastor, you cannot get away from the fact that how the pastor speaks, how the pastor conducts their lives, how the pastor is dressed that affects the message. It does. That is Basic communication skills. Yes, a pastor is delivering a message from God when the text of Scripture is rightly exegeted, but also a message is a glorified uh, speech. It is a holy speech. He is delivering a holy persuasive speech week after week. He or she is delivering a persuasive speech week after week after week. It's a message from God, but it's still a speech. It's greater than a normal speech because it's from the God. So all of those important pieces of how is the pastor presenting himself? How What is the conduct of the pastor on and off the spa- stage? How is does the pastor speak and dress, all these things, that contributes to the overarching message, which speaks volumes, I think, of pastors who actually do that and pastors who are posing to do that. There are some pastors who, when you meet them, when you act, interact with them, they are genuinely living out gospel love for their congregation. There's a few pastors that come to mind immediately that I have experienced that they genuinely love others and they are, their conduct reflects that. How they treat their family reflects that. And they're genuine about it. And then there are others that, this is judgmental, there are others who you can tell that there's a little bit of a try-hardness to it. Like they are they are trying to drop bible verses when they talk to people they're trying like they're it just comes off a little bit more inauthentic like they know they should be acting a certain way that they are communicating a message 
And so they're acting spiritual uh, rather than other people who have been truly transformed by the gospel, by the message that they're studying, and it just is becomes a part of their life. That is what we are all should be striving for is a lifestyle of studying God's word to be transformed by it, to be transformed by truth, and that it affects our lives so that way we can love others and affect others properly. We all carry a message to some degree. We all, we all do as we study God's word. That gets back to the whole small groups thing of like, yes, we can communicate truth through talking to one another. We can transform and be sanctified through the communication of truth with one another. Preaching is another legitimate avenue for that, that really gets past the we're just talking about opinions. We're talking about perspectives to I have, hopefully, not every pastor, but hopefully I have spent time. I have exegeted this passage. I have soaked it up. I am a living message of this message that I am proclaiming to you. And that's why preaching matters, because it is a, in a way, it is a step up is an advancement from just, hey, let's get together and talk about it. That's still good. If you have a small group, a home church, or whatever, if you're doing those things, those are good practices, but you still need preaching in your life. You still need teaching in your life. So, that is it for today's episode. Thanks for dropping in. That is why preaching matters because it is a main tool that God uses to transform the pastors and to transform the congregation. As long as everybody is studying <laughs> properly and the congregation is got open hearts and open ears to receive the message. But again, thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're new around here, what I do is I talk about the stuff that I'm studying in grad school right now. So things are wrapping up for me. I've got this class and then three more folks. And I'm not saying that I've started outlining what we're going to do after I graduate, but I've started outlining what we're going to do after I graduate. It's pretty exciting, or at least I'm interested in doing it. But thanks again for listening. If you haven't already, make sure you're following the show on Facebook and Instagram at My Seminary Life pod. You can go into the description of this episode to find links for everything, the website, the merch store, the fa the Facebook, the Instagram. You can also contact the show, email seminarylife at gmail.com if you have any question, comments, concerns, limericks, poems, blah, 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 blah. Just behind this episode on the feed is the uh, is this month, this month, excuse me, one more thing featuring Dr. Ashley Mofield of Mixtape Theology. He joins me to talk about how music influences our theology. And it was a fun time reminiscing about some of our favorite songs from the 90s and early 2000s and talking about how God uses music as a form of discipleship to transform us. So check that out. I had him on there because that's another way that truth is communicated through music. So it was a lot of fun. And make sure you check out their show mixtape theology they fo they uh focus on all things 90 ccm music and culture so it's fun it's a fun show just behind that one is a sermon on job 25 and i have gotten a lot of good feedback on that episode so thank you everybody who has reached out and yes because of that i've decided that moving forward Every once in a while, I'll be dropping a sermon for you all to listen to. I've got a couple preaching engagements here at the end of the month, so we'll start. I'll start building up some bonus episodes or filler episodes when we when we need it. Because I'm clearly very busy in May. Every year there is a drop off in listening in May, and I think I'm also the busiest in the May to June realm when I'm like off doing things on Saturday morning. So, oh, well, oh, well, but hey, if I've got extra sermons, I can just start releasing them and I'll take care of that. Anyway, I'm rambling now. 
And just behind the sermon episode is the critically acclaimed Smashing Pumpkins episode. And the reason why I say that is because as of right now, we're halfway through the year. And in December, like I did last year, I'm going to count down the top five most downloaded episodes of 2022. And as of right now, Smashing Pumpkins jumped into the lead, not just like squeaked up there. Like, no, it 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 has grabbed the lead by the horns and is running away with things. So we'll see where we're at by the end of the year. But as of right now, Smashing Pumpkins is in the lead. And if you haven't listened to that episode, don't worry. It has nothing to do with 1979 or Bullets with Butterfly Wings or anything related to the band. It's just a fun title. Go check it out. That is it for today's episode. We'll be back next week to talk more about preaching and why it matters and how we do it. But until next time, keep on studying.